All right, folks, welcome back to Callahan's Garage. My name's Callahan. Today, we're gonna jump straight into it. We're gonna start working on our transaxle. We've already done a bunch of work to this thing. We got new boots, we got all our new brakes installed on here. We got a front nose cone mount. We got our 12 volt starter. We got our 12 volt starter adapter bushing for our six volt housing. So the last thing we need to do before we put this back into the car is we need to clearance the bell housing for our new 12 volt flywheel. And this is a super common thing that you have to do on the earlier transmission cases. They're just a little bit smaller. And in order to install a 12 volt flywheel in here, we need to grind out a little bit of this case. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. Okay, so we're gonna go through step-by-step step where this needs to be ground, the best way to do it. First, I'm gonna show you everything that you're gonna to need to do this. And we don't need a whole lot. You know, this isn't a super complicated job. It's just really dirty and dusty and kind of annoying. So the first thing we're gonna need is our 12 volt flywheel and the clutch setup that you're planning to use. There are a few different variations of pressure plates and stuff like that. So you wanna make sure that you have the one that you're actually gonna use. That way you know that it's gonna clear inside of your bell housing. Next thing we need a series of grinding implements. So I'm just gonna use my cordless angle grinder here. I've got a couple different rocks. I'm gonna use just a reg I've got just a regular grinding stone that will work fine. However, if you have a cotton rock that is specifically for non-ferrous materials, that will help out a lot. A regular grinding rock will have a tendency to load up with the magnesium as we're grinding it, losing some of its effectiveness. Um, you can also just use a regular flapper disc, but it's, again, same thing. It's going to have a tendency to load up with that magnesium. Now, you can use a couple of different things to keep these from loading up with this material. They make various bars and waxes that you can use, and you would just simply apply it to your grinding pad before you start grinding on your material. However, a regular old bar of soap works just as well. So if all you have is a flapper disc like this, get your bar of soap out of the bathroom, lube this thing up, and that's gonna help keep it from loading up while you're doing this grinding. I also have just a die grinder with a cylindrical flapper disc, and I'll use that to kind of smooth this up and clean it up once we do the bulk of our grinding with our angle grinder here. Okay, so then next, like we said, this is a dirty job, it's a very dusty job, and this is a magnesium case transaxle. So, you're gonna want a respirator and then some kind of ventilation. I'm just gonna open up the door here and I'm gonna turn all my fans on and get some air movement. Um, but if you don't have anything like that, just take the, move this thing outside. You know, you don't wanna be doing this in a confined area. So the next point that we really need to emphasize is like we said, this is a magnesium case. It's gonna make a lot of dust. That magnesium dust is very flammable. So, you know, the risk of starting a fire is is very serious when you're doing this um, and I'm not saying this to say that this is a super scary job or super dangerous or anything like that but we need to be cautious you know we need to take a couple of precautions like I said have some ventilation have some air moving get this dust away from you and your work area while you're doing it I personally know three different people that have set themselves on fire doing this exact same job and there's a couple of precautions we can do to help mitigate that. So like we said, number one thing, get some air movement, get some ventilation, get this dust moving away from us. So if you're doing this in the car, it's gonna be a little more difficult to get that dust moving out and away from yourself. So make sure that you have a fan or something if you're still doing this in the car. Also, if you're still doing this in the car, we want to remove these rear transmission mounts. So these little guys that hold our rear transmission in place get them out of the way because these steel studs that poke up through here are gonna get in the way. They're gonna interfere with where we need to grind. And if you hit these steel studs and start making a bunch of sparks in all of this magnesium dust that we're creating, that is where we start to run into our risk of fire. So anything like this, you know, just be very mindful of it. Same thing with our input shaft. We don't wanna, we don't wanna be nicking this input shaft with our grinder anyway, but again, it's also steel. It will create sparks if you hit it. Those sparks are not what we want when we're doing this kind of work. So if you've never done this before, there's a few key areas that we always have to start with in order to get our flywheel to even fit into the bell housing. So that is why we have our flywheel and our clutch set up already so that we can literally just take it and put it into place. And if we slide it up onto our input shaft here, we can see right now, this won't even go into the bell housing. It's hitting in a couple different spots. So you can just get down here, you can look around the perimeter of it and look at where it's physically hitting the bell housing. So then if we take a look at our bell housing, we can see these areas that it was hitting. 
And these are the first areas that we're going to start to knock down. And it's these areas where we have this little bit of reinforcement in our case around our mount bolts. So here on our starter bolt, here up on our oil cooler side bolt, and then our two lower bolts. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to start to remove a little bit of material from right on top of these areas. And you can see where it's raised up. And we're just going to gradually knock those down a little bit of time until our flywheel will fit into the bell housing. Okay, so we got our first little round of grinding done. We hit these four areas that we needed to in order to get our flywheel into the bell housing here. Also, one thing I forgot to mention, anytime you're using a grinder or any kind of reciprocating, rotating tool, make sure you got some safety glasses. I never think to mention that because I wear regular glasses every day and I've got safety lenses in these, but make sure you got some safety glasses on. This dust is slinging everywhere. The last thing you want is some of this metal dust in your eyes. So now we can take our flywheel again, we'll test fit it up in here, see what we need to do, and we'll just keep working at it until we can get that flywheel fully seated into our transaxle. Also, make note, I still have my old throwout bearing in here. Don't put your new throwout bearing in here and get it full of dust and crud to where it's going to go bad prematurely. So I've got my old one in here and that's going to allow me to put my pressure plate all the way up in here where it needs to fully seat into this bell housing. So you can see these couple of areas, like I mentioned, just basically right on top of where our bolts go through the bell housing. And we just kind of blended these areas out, removed those humped up reinforcement areas of our case. Now we should be able to get our flywheel to seat in here. So there we go, now we are into our bell housing and all we need to do is just keep doing what we were doing. Just kind of look through the sides, see where it's rubbing. The other thing you can do is we can rotate this flywheel as it's in here and that'll leave us some witness marks on our bell housing and show us exactly where we need to grind. And I'm gonna show you a quick trick for how to do that. Okay, so we've got our flywheel set in place here. All we need to do, get a pair of gloves on, get you a nice size screwdriver and we're gonna stick this screwdriver into the back side of our pressure plate bolt holes. And what we can do is we can apply a little bit of pressure with one hand around the snout of our flywheel right here. And then we'll just stick our screwdriver in here and use that to just kind of rotate this thing around. And you can hear it grinding in there. And as it's grinding, that's leaving us a witness mark of exactly where we're gonna to need to continue to clearance on this thing. So I'm just gonna sit here and do this for a few minutes. That way we get some good indicators of where we need to grind and then we'll grind some more. The other thing that you wanna do when you're doing this is you wanna kinda of slightly lift on this flywheel because right now that input shaft doesn't have any support and it does have some play in it. So we just wanna slightly lift up on this and you can see how that flywheel just moves a little bit and that's gonna indicate all the way around the flywheel and tell us where we need to grind. All right, let's see how that works. Oh yeah, so now we got some nice little marks here. Let's take a look at that. So now, as you can see, we have really nice clear witness marks all the way around our bell housing showing us exactly where we need to remove some material. And this is the best way to do this, is just grind a little bit, check it with your flywheel. Grind a little bit, check it with your flywheel. The last thing you wanna do is go and just start wailing on this thing with your grinder and end up removing too much material. I can't even tell you how many bell housings I've seen where it's ground all the way through your bolt opening right here because people just don't know how much needs to be removed and they remove way too much. So 
We're just gonna grind a little bit and keep checking it. Okay, so we've done about three rounds of grinding here and hopefully we're getting pretty close. We're gonna check it one more time. Same thing, we're just gonna spin this thing. We can hear it grinding just in a couple of small spots now. So we should be, should be getting pretty close to finishing this up. Yeah, so we got very small witness marks down here now. I think, I think this might be our last round of grinding. Okay, so I think we're done with all of our heavy grinding. We're not getting any more witness marks from our flywheel when we put it in here and rotate it. So I think we've got all the clearancing done that we need. So let's take a look at everywhere that we had to clearance. So like I said, the bulk of it is gonna be these four spots that we started with. And then we've got the bottom, our sides, and a little bit on the top. Also, we have this nub right here around our clutch arm shaft. This needs to be ground out for your pressure plate. So very similar to how it is over here. We just don't want the pressure plate to end up fouling on this. So you'll end up with a few little witness marks here. Just grind a little bit here. This is one of the areas that you also need to be really careful about because you can grind too much right here. And that's the main theme for all of this is just go slow, remove your material a little bit at a time until you get it to where you need. So now I'm just gonna take my die grinder with that cylindrical flat disc and I'm gonna clean all this up a little bit more, smooth it all out. And that's one of the other big things is we don't wanna create any hard edges or any like sharp edges inside of here when we're doing this. So we wanna make sure that all of this is feathered out nice and smooth. We don't wanna create any areas where stress could locate and crack in the future. So we're gonna blend all this out as nice and smooth as we can and then we'll be finished up. Okay, so there we go. We got everything all nice and smoothed out, cleaned up really well. So that's gonna work out really nicely for us. And remember, we just got a couple of areas we need to be really careful of, mainly these corners right here. These get really thin really quickly. It's really easy to grind all the way through there before you realize what's happening. And then same thing right here, just be really careful in that area. The rest of this, we're not really removing a whole lot of material, just a little bit here and there. So you don't have to be as careful up here, but you know, again, just be mindful that we're not creating any sharp edges. We're not making any ledges or corners, you know, where stress is gonna locate. But otherwise it's a pretty straightforward job. An angle grinder with a rock is gonna make pretty quick work with this. You can see it didn't take me very long. And then just come back in here with a flat disc. If you're trying to do all of this with a flat disc or with a die grinder, it's gonna take a little while longer. Just be patient. Like I said, you know, just go do one round at a time, remove a little bit of material at a time and you'll get it. Not much to it. All right, so we're totally finished up with this thing. Now we can finish prepping it to go back into the car. We gotta get our mounts on here. I got a new throw out bearing, new input shaft seal we're gonna put on here. We'll throw our starter back on here and this thing will be good to go. So again, like I said, this isn't a super difficult job. You just kinda of have to go slow, take your time, pay attention to what you're doing and just be careful. That's the main thing is be careful while you're doing this. Make sure you're getting all this dust out of the way. Make sure you're being safe. Wear your respirator, use ear protection, use eye protection. Just be mindful of what you're doing. That's the main thing. So hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. If you need some more Volkswagen how-to videos, I got a whole playlist going. And if you want to see something specific, put it in the comments too. So thanks for watching. See you guys next time.